It's long. It is um, July the 30th, 2018. July the 30th, 2018. And I am about to uh, read um, Rhonda Arrington Hyphen Bay. I'm going to read Divine Warning by the Prophet Nova Jirali, um, page 16 of um, Moorish Literature. It says, Prophet warns all Muslims, governors ordered to read proclamation at each meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must end all radical agitating speeches while at work in their homes or on the streets. We are for peace and not destruction. Stop flashing your cards at Europeans. It causes confusion. Remember, your card is for your salvation. Failure to obey these orders will be a severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And when these principles are violated, justice must take must then take its course. Any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the law as laid down to them by their prophet. If they lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in their card and button. Cease wearing their turban and fez and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. This is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet Nobujuali. And if the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet, therefore, is sending out the divine plea to all Moorish Americans that they do their part in protecting the prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways by order prophet Nobujali I mean meditation okay <laughs> Okay, um. okay, I'm about to read next, um, oops, Sorry for several seven. Islam. <laughs> Next, I'm going to read um, Magistrate and Subject, Chapter Twenty Nine of the Holy Quran Circle 7. 
this um book I had um was t the top the the it was torn so all I could do is show you this. Okay. It says magistrate and subject. O thou, the favor of heaven, whom the sons of men, thy equals, have agreed to raise to sovereign power, and set as a ruler over themselves. Consider the ends and importance of their trust far more than the dignity and height of thy station. Let me read that again. O thou, the favorite of heaven, whom the sons of men, thy equals, have agreed to raise to sovereign power and set as a ruler over themselves, consider the ends and importance of their trust far more than the dignity and height of thy station. Thou art clothed in purple and seated on a throne. The crown of majesty invested thy temples. The scepter of power is placed in thy hand. But not for thyself were these ensigns given, not meant for thy own, but the good of the kingdom. The glory of a king is the welfare of his people. His power and dominion rest on the hearts of his subjects. The mind of a great prince is exalted with the grandeur of his situation. He involves high things and search for business worthy of his power. He called together the wise men of his kingdom. He consult among them with freedom and hear the opinions of them all. He looked among his people with discernment. He discovered the abilities of men and employed them according to their merits. His magistrates are just. His ministries are wise, and the favorite of his bosom deceive him not. He smiled on the arts, and they flourish. The sciences improves, improve beneath the culture of his hand. With the learned and ingenuous, he delight himself. He kindles in their breasts emulia. Em Immolation and the glory of his kingdom is, is exalted by their labors. The spirit of the merchant who extend his commerce, the skill of the farmer who enrich his lands, the ingenuity of the artist, the improvements of the scholar, all these he honored with his favor or reward with his bounty. He plant new colonies. He builds strong ships. He open rivers for convenience. He form arbors, harbors for safety. His people abound in riches and the strength of his kingdom increased. He framed his statues with equity and wisdom. His subjects enjoy the fruits of their labor in security. And their happiness consists in the observance of the law. He found his judgments on the principle of mercy, but in the punishments of offenders, he is strict and impartial. His ears are open to the complaints of his subjects. He restrains the hands of their oppressors. 
and he delivered them from their tyranny. His people, therefore, look up to him as a father with reverence and love. They consider him as the garden guardian of all they enjoy. The affections unto him beget in his breast of love of the public. The security of their happiness is the object of his care. But his people, therefore, look up to him as a father. Whether reverence and love, they consider him as the guardian of all they enjoy. The affection unto him beget in his breast of love of the public. The security of their happiness is the object of his care. No murmurs against him arise in their hearts. The machinations of his enemies endanger not the state. His subjects are faithful and firm in his cause. They stand in his defense as a wall of brass. The army of a tyrant flieth before them as shaft before the wind. Security and peace bless the dwelling of his people, and glory and strength encircle his throne forever. Islam. Okay, that's um, chapter 29, Magistrate and Subject. I think I read this before, but I read it again. I just read it again. So, um, the next, next chapter I'm going to read is chapter 30. Islam. It's July the uh, 30th, 2018. It's on Rhonda Arrington Day. And I just read uh, Moorish American, I mean Moorish Literature, uh, Divine Warning from the Prophet on page 16. By the Prophet, Noble Jali on page 16. And the Holy Crown Circle 7, chapter 29, Islam.